ready. Another episode of Midnight Musings podcast. We have a very special guest with us tonight. Um, Kaylee, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Who are you? What are you doing here? Um, well, my name is Kaylee. Um, I live in Las Vegas and I'm a mom of three and I also do modeling and acting. So, so multi-talented. Why are you here? What are you doing here? What are, what are we going to even talk about? Because like last episode, I had this guy talk about aliens and we just went off. So I don't know. Yeah. What are we going to talk about? Um, I think we're going to talk about just life, um, dating, um, the 21st century. With your soothing events. voice. So yeah. So if you guys are listening to this, like Kaylee is just going to soothe you guys and we're just going <laughs> to talk about dating. And if you're listening to this and you don't have a significant other well still enjoy this is for everyone so yeah um let's let's cover some interesting subjects here um what's it like i mean obviously you know you live in the 21st century yeah what is dating like or what has it been like um horrible i'm gonna be honest i feel like all of my friends that are single and actively looking are having the hardest time. Yeah. And I think it's online dating. I think it's the apps and like how available everything has been. Like, I don't know. It makes it a little too easy. Like, you know, I, I don't like to romanticize other decades though, because they also yeah. have their major flaws. Like, it's funny to me when everyone says, Oh, yeah, I wish everything was like the 50s. I'm like, No, no you don't. Like, <laughs> no, I, I'm pretty sure if you're a wife, you don't want to get like pimp slapped around because you did the meat, I don't know, meatloaf wrong or something. So it's like, um, 50s is not as romantic as it appears to be, but there was this type of aspect that was kind of interesting. It's like you kind of have to like, hunt for your significant other there weren't just like yeah. thousands of available profiles available yeah and i feel like we've fallen into like i don't know just like an era where it's like oh she's not cute enough she's like mm. like you want to like build a bear but your girlfriend right so it's like everyone's looking for like the perfect look and it's not necessarily like the personality and the spark yeah whereas i feel like back in the day people just knew each other more like, we're not texting, we're not looking at photos constantly, like, you're talking more. Even in the early 2000s, yeah. like, you had conversations with people more, and you were, you know, most of the time when they dated, it was, like, people that you met at work or school, like, people who knew you. Phone exchange was so cute, too. Remember, like, when you were, like, in high school or whatever, like, if you wanted someone's number, even if it was, like, a house phone number, you would still, like, write it down on a piece of paper, and it's like, hey want my number here's my number or something and it's like i don't know it's just it felt so different now it's mm -hmm. like it felt like a big deal right and oh, you now gave him like, your number <laughs> yeah did you give him your number like yeah. it's such a big deal and then also like i don't know everyone in the house knew that you were on the phone right so you couldn't like like right now like i'm hanging out with people and they're like oh i'm texting like three or four guys right now right. it just lost it's like appeal i think it's because it's not you know uh, at least one of the reasons like it's not localized anymore like nowadays yeah. like if you want to text some you know rich guy that's in like dubai or whatever and you know and he's like hey you know i can give you a much better life like a typical person having that kind of dating opportunity is like do i really want to give that super nice guy down the road a chance he could be better for me but this other guy's wealthy, so it's like in that same sense. It's like, I don't well, like, know. I think that if she chooses to go with the wealthy guy, then yeah. that was the goal. Yeah. So, I don't know. I feel like women are very aware of what they're doing and what they're looking for. Because yeah. if I was looking for a nice guy, I'd go with the nice guy. But if I was looking for yeah. a wealthy guy, I'd go with the wealthy guy. So I but don't like you think it messes up, like, I don't know, people's localized like experience like yeah like i mean i guess the inverse could apply too like if if a guy wants to message like some hot model from like i don't know russia or whatever and he's like yeah i want to go for that babe but it's like what happens to people actually trying to yeah. interact with like within their no normal sphere of influence like you used to get referrals and be like hey i think such and such is really nice and now it's like i don't care what any anyone has to say Which like i just want to find my safer actually because yeah. you know someone said they weren't a serial killer yeah you know cro um, cross off a couple of checklists okay yeah my friend yeah. knows them I, don't I know. feel like what you're referring to is more so like when people date very transactional mm. so like the guy's looking for beauty right the girl's looking for money it's very yeah. transactional dating which that's always been a thing totally I mean, it's, it's the oldest i mean literally transaction hey have is 
I'll trade you position. three cows for <laughs> your yeah, first daughter. Yeah, that's always been a thing. But I think that, you know, finding a partner just to go through life with right. is different. And you date with that intention. And when you date with that intention, it's going to open up different doors. But I do think that the online dating is a little toxic because you're looking at their face and their stats Almost like you're building like a football team. Like you're exactly. like, how tall are you? How old are you? How much do you make? What's your face look like? Whereas, you know, if you knew the guy, if you worked with him, if you went to school with him or a friend vouched or, you know, something yeah. happened where you have a conversation first, like you would overlook things because right. you love that person. And there's deal breakers. Like I don't think I could ever go out with someone with bad hygiene. Like okay. ever. That's a deal breaker. For okay. Me. So <laughs> since it's midnight musings podcast and we want to get like juicy, what, oh, juicy. how do we even define bad hygiene? Go, I mean, go off, go off with some offenders. Oh, like if you're listening to this right now and so, you have bad hygiene, you better listen up. Yeah. Um, bad hygiene. I've gone out with guys where, and I, I want to say that the, the complete opposite's true. The opposite sure. happened a hundred times, but I've gone out with guys where you hug them. Yeah. And you're like, hi, I'm so happy that you were able to make it. Right. And like, you just smell and you're like, maybe we shouldn't have gone out. Like, <laughs> I, I wish I was at home right Ooh, now. Ooh, right in the spot. Like, yeah, I think, start all over. Like teeth. Mm. Brush your teeth. Right. Floss your teeth. Like mouthwash. Just got off of just eating a yeah. nice hunk of meat. Well, I keep a little mouthwash in my purse. So Smart. it's like, you know, just spit in the parking lot. <laughs> like, before you come in, it's like something. And right. I think... Like, it also shows a lack of effort, a lack of interest. I like effort. Right. So when a guy, like, one of my favorite guys I've ever dated, we met through work. And when he came to pick me up for a date, like, he was different. He had a different cologne on. He, Ooh. like, made sure to, like, dress nicer. Like, he smelled really good. And, right. like, his hair was done where he never did his hair for work. So I felt like, wow, like... He put in that effort. Like, it was actually an occasion. It wasn't mm -hmm. just, like, some happenstance. Oh, I'm bored. Hey, you want to go out? And it's like, yeah. no. Like, he's he's thinking about it. Yeah. yeah. And I feel like that effort is, like, what every girl is really looking for. Right. And that lack of hygiene just comes off as lack of effort. Like, right. Like, especially, like, oh, when they smell, like, manure. Yeah. And you're just, like, I wasn't worth washing your ass for. <laughs> Like, come on. Like, I'm right. at least worth a shower. Right. <laughs> like, Okay, and so this is what I'm curious at. Like, do you find that those guys with poor hygiene, are they the ones that are trying to get most action too? Is it like that? Or? I feel like, and this is my experience, the men that have had bad hygiene, that yeah. have asked me out and I've gone out with them to dinner or, you know, a movie, whatever it was, that lack of effort was all over. Hmm. The hygiene was like the tip of the iceberg. But when you're dun, really dun, dun. talking to them, they're like, yeah, and I'm meeting my friends after this. So we got to, we got to go straight. Oh my god! Like I got to go drop you off. Like right. we're meeting my friends after. And it was also like, I didn't get that text back or right. like, cause I don't do this anymore for safety reasons. But when I was younger and everyone knew each other, I lived in like a smaller area. Okay. Like they would pick me up from my house and drop me off at my house. And like the guys that don't even wait to see if you're in the door. Yeah. Like they just skirt down the street and you're like, I'm not even in the house it's yet. It's like fundamentals guys. Yeah. Like, first of all, like, haven't you seen any kind of romantic movie? Listen, I'm not even, I'm not even a rom-com <laughs> fan. I really am. I, I really am not. Like, I don't really watch those kind of movies, but it's like, yeah. it's like, come on. Like, don't you, don't you understand some but principles here? It's a I'm concern saying, about safety. that lack of effort. And I've seen yeah. it from girls too, because I am bisexual and I've dated okay. women. And when I invite a girl out and, you know, I've had a girl show up and like her hair is in a messy pony, no makeup, like in her, whatever she slept in. And she's okay. like, and I think... Was it a bowling alley date? It was something where it was like jeans would have been okay, but right. like you should probably look okay. Like the jeans that you like to go out in, not the yeah. jeans that are used for like house repair or something. Yeah. And um, that la and I was like, I'm much more forgiving with women than men. Okay. So I did not judge her off that. I was like, you know, we all have our days. Um, in my head, I was like, but if you were going to be tired, like maybe we should have rescheduled because I did want it to be a big deal. Yeah. Um, but that lack of effort, it transcended into her whole persona around me. Right. Like 
hey, I'm going to go get a drink. And I'm like, oh, can you grab me? And she's already gone. And I'm like, oh, okay. And then it's like, <laughs> hey, um, do you want to get together again? And she's like, I can't. I'm busy. And I'm like, I didn't say when. Like, if you're not interested, just right. don't be interested. But don't string people along when you're not interested. And I feel like when someone isn't putting in the effort in their appearance around you, it's because they don't feel you're worth the effort. Right. And they're going to treat you as such. And it's interesting, you know, about like not bothering to tell people if they're interested or not. Yeah. Like, I feel like it's this this type of fear of confrontation, even though there yeah. wouldn't be any confrontation Honestly, if you were direct. And it's like people are like, uh, I don't want to hurt their feelings. So I'm just going to ghost them. Like, you do realize that causes much more damage to someone in just not hearing anything than just yeah. saying, you know what? Mm, I don't think it's going to work out. Hey, we can be friends. Sounds a lot easier. I don't know. I feel like... It's that you're not the dream girl. Okay. But they're kind of hoping that you're the right now girl. Mm. And then they'll put you on the back burner when they meet someone they actually care about. Interesting. It's mean. But I think that's what's yeah. going on. Because, like, and this is when I was still dating. But back then, when I stopped talking to a, the, a guy, one particular that was okay. coming to mind with the bad hygiene. But... He would like keep me on the sh on the string. Like he would okay. give me like a little good morning text, a little poke. Right. How are you, stranger? Oh gosh. Hey, big head. Facebook poke. Yeah, like he would do some little thing. Yeah. To just be like, I want to still be in your life, but I want to put in zero effort. Right. But I want to keep the door open in case that, like we could have sex one day. Right. Like that's what I kind of read it as. So. I completely just like blocked him and just ended it. And then the girl as well. Like I feel like she was like. You know, do you want to get food? Do you want to hang out? And it was always like late at night, and I'm kind of like, like, come on, booty call time. We already know how it is. Yeah, and I'm not a fan of booty calls. Yeah, I'm not a fan of hookup culture. So I was just, I just cut those people out. So now, if I were to go on a date and the person oops, bad hygiene, I'm seeing that as a red flag, yeah. like right away, because of my experiences, like. And if people are like, because I did have this conversation with a girlfriend of mine and she was arguing. Okay. Well, what if he just came from work? And I'm like, well, then reschedule where you have time. And, and I just want that effort. Right. Like you need to act like I'm someone that you want to impress. Right. And I think it's, uh, and it comes down to this too. Like when people say like, I'm always busy, I'm always busy. Like that is you showing to the world that you're in chaos right now. You have yeah. no control over your life. So, like, if you do come across and you get busy, it's like, well, just just state the fact. Hey, you know what? I'm a little bit of trouble here, but you're super important to me. I would love to, like, let me do yeah. this date right. Let me do it the, the perfect time. And, you know, can we reschedule? And then it's as easy as that. But if you just try to, like, mosey on by, uh, hey, like, you want to go out or whatever? It's yeah. like, like you can't maybe your way through don't everything. Don't text me at 10 p.m. Yeah. Don't if it's after five, don't make plans with me anymore. <laughs> like And guys, you know, if you're listening to this and you're a little bit on the younger side, like I understand, okay, I get it. Okay. <laughs> like don't worry, I you know, I've been through my fair share of like hookups and all this kind of stuff. But growing up in Vegas, like hookup culture is, is very intense and it's it's not healthy whatsoever. You know, but you have to learn from your mistakes. You can't be like high school, you know, college hookup guy forever. Sooner or later, you have to grow up and actually, you know, enjoy the finer things in life. Um, yeah. So, yeah, there's your little message, okay? You get a hall pass, like, once, and then <laughs> afterwards, it's like... You get one whole face. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Step up your game now. Come on now. But, okay, so we've talked about bad hygiene, red flag. Can you tell me about some other red flags? Oh, could I? Yes, yeah, story time, please. Um... If everyone they've ever dated is crazy. Ooh, how crazy. When they tell you, like, this one ex keyed my car, this other ex, she went insane and, like, would show up at my house at right. all hours, and this other ex. And I'm like, it's weird that they're all crazy, but you're not. Right, it's like, ooh, <laughs> the level of coincidence here. I don't know if that's a coincidence. Are you the problem? Who knows? So if yeah. this story is exciting to you, don't go anywhere. We're going to take a brief commercial break and we'll be right back. We're going to talk about some red flags. So Kaylee, please don't leave us hanging. What should okay. we watch out for? Well, I think the first one was bad hygiene. Right. Um, the second one was 
when all of their exes are crazy. Right. And everyone around them is crazy. Everyone's the problem except you. Yeah. Huh, interesting. And also, I think, like, pulling that victim card, it kind of falls under that. Right, um, very similar, yeah. But when they're very much so, like, poor me, help me, save me. And right. it's... You're just like, well, who are you? Yeah. Um, that's a red flag because it could be a manipulation tactic. Like, I want you to feel sorry for me. Right. Um, I mean, I feel like everyone knows, like, the basic ones, like demanding your body and sex and nudes and things like that. That's a red flag. Right. Um, oh, my God. But, it, you know, it comes as, it. like, basic as something as, like, you know, like, when people think, like, manipulation, a lot of times they think of, like, oh, it's some crazy story, some crazy lie to, yeah. like, fool me into things. Like, sometimes it's, it's just it's subtle. It's really subtle. I mean, yeah, body language is a powerful thing. It's that certain look you give someone. It can be just as simple as puppy eyes, right? But like, are you mm. doing it in an endearing way? Or are you just doing it because, I don't know, you want to manipulate someone? And so like, I don't know, manipulation I think is big. And there's like so many layers to it. I feel it. like whenever you're trying to get someone to do something. Yeah. And you're not saying that thing, that's manipulation. Like, if a husband wants a wife to quit their job. And instead yeah. of just saying that. They say, you don't really need that job. Who are you talking to anyways? Right. Why do you like going there? I hate when you go to work. And they start making your job an obstacle. And then when you're like, I think I'll quit my job. They're like, that's a great idea, honey. Right. And it's like... It's only was... a great idea when it agrees with what yeah, you're saying. But that's a manipulation. Because they were trying to get you to do that the whole time. Totally. But they didn't say that out loud. And, you know, it's interesting because, like, I... I get it, but sometimes I feel like me, you know, being married for a while now, it's like I, I fall into critique mode and I'm like, I don't want to be that. You know, I want to try to empathize with people, but it's yeah. like communication is, yeah, I mean, it's it's not that hard. It's I don't I don't think it's either. that hard. <laughs> I mean, like, like if you want to, you know, because like things change in life, right? And yeah. you're allowed to have a paradigm shift. You're allowed to like, like and change in life. But like, if you are now you know wanting your significant other to live at home now like yeah. you have to factor that in and you have to factor it in early you yeah. know be like hey listen you know i'm kind of feeling a certain way like i think maybe because of x y and z it would be a good idea how do you feel about it like yeah. that's the like, key that's thing that's an honest conversation right like, i feel like that would be a healthy right. way of managing that but just because personal experience a lot of my girlfriends they have great jobs and great careers and then they get with guys that are insecure. Right. And um, yes. Also, I think any that's that's what I wanted to get going back. I All right. um, Red flags. The final Insecurity. Tier. Yeah. Insecurity where, you know, if a guy is flirting with you and you say, no, thanks. I have a boyfriend. If yeah. your boyfriend reacts anger, it's yeah. like, whoa there, buddy. <laughs> Um, where is this coming from? Cause I didn't do anything wrong. The guy hitting on me didn't do anything wrong. He didn't know I was taken. So it's like, no one did anything wrong. So why are you mad? Yeah. You know, and I feel like this is such like locker room talk and you know, things for, for guys to like be mindful of too, because I know so many friends, you know, they're still just out there doing their own thing. And like, they're all like, yeah, there's like no good girls for me. Like, it's always like, dude, you're not, I'm sorry, man. You're not the epitome. You're not the perfection of man. Yeah. And you have to really look at your imperfections. Like, just because someone is not into you doesn't mean they hate you. Doesn't mean the world is against you. It's, guess what? You guys weren't a mesh for each other. Now, check yourself and just how people do, you know, football playbacks and all this stuff. You know, check your interactions. How did she feel when you said a certain thing? You know, facial expression, all these stuff. I feel like a lot of people are like, man, that date sucked. On to the next one. It's like, hold on a second. Let it, let it simmer a little bit, even if it hurts. Like Also, because I've heard so many men say, yeah. there's no good women out there. Dude, it's hilarious. Um, I'm always like, are you a good man? Right. And like, if so, like how, why, how do you think you're a good man? What about you makes you worthy of the woman that you're looking for and right. usually they fall short usually they they give me promises right. as examples they'll be like well i'm going to mm. and i was like well what if she's going to but right. you're not going to be with her but what if so, she's already at you know what you would call like a yeah. more you because know upgraded me, like, stage I of her life a girl in good shape yeah i want a girl with her own job her own hobbies yeah i want a girl that takes good care of herself 
And I'm like, well, would you date a college student? And most of my friends are 25 to 35. Okay. 25 to 40 range. Yeah. Um, and they're like, no, I would never date a college student. Oh, and I'm like, funny. oh, okay, so where, where are you at in your career? Well, I'm about to start this thing or I'm about right. to, I'm going for this raise. And I'm like, okay, but if, if you wouldn't date a girl that's working towards it, you want her to be there when you meet her. Yeah. Why should she be with you and build with you? If you're not going to build her. It's super interesting. You know, and it's funny because I think it happens to a degree. And then when they realize that, oh man, you know, I'm not being able to get these quote unquote high value women. Guess what? It's always funny. They always revert to going younger anyways. Like if they can't find anyone and they're like approaching, you know, past their prime years, they will eventually go to the college girls. And I'm like, dude, Mm -hmm. like they're definitely not going to want you now. Because honestly, and here's the thing, the college girls are going to be impressed with a mediocre guy right. in his 30s because a mediocre guy in his 30s has more going for him than even a 20 year old with so much potential of course you could be like freaking killing so, it you could be yeah. like the next i don't know whatever you know super rich person next elon musk or whatever but it's like obviously you have to start at point a yeah. and if this dude's point f is like somehow a little bit better you're gonna get impressed by him but it's like well, the other thing too they're yeah, go better ahead. at manipulation they're True. Older they got guys. experience. Because when I was, you know, 18, 19, 20, I yeah. was dating a lot. I was trying to find the one. I was going out on a lot of dates at the time. And the guys I went out with were sometimes over 30 years old. Yeah. And I look back and I just cringe because I'm like, what would you even want with me? Like, yeah. I had no idea what I was doing. They I, like that because then was they can mold you. I feather in the wind. And yeah. they... Yeah, and they would say, like, I'm going to, like, apprentice you. And it's like, oh, gross, Ugh, dude. Like, what do you mean by that? And, you know, I appreciate the guys now that are, like, I'm looking for a girl with her own job, her own friends, her own yeah. hobbies. And at the same time when they're, like, but she also has to be, like, a 10. She has to be, right. like, hot. Like, I want her to be so hot. And they go after, like, my friends that are just 10s and beautiful women. Yeah. And I'm, like, you're a five. Like, I don't know if you right. know this about yourself, but you're not, you're not the match. Right. Or, you know, I tried to set a friend up with a friend that I thought would be great. And oh, he, like, matchmaker complained. time. He really? Complained. He was like, she's not that pretty. Like, I thought she was going to be pretty. I had someone do the same thing. I was like, listen, bro, I'm trying to help you out. And I'm like, listen, yeah. she's still too hot for you. Yeah. Like... And even then, you're like, oh, no, I want someone higher up. I'm like, dude, do you, do you assess yourself a little bit? Okay. Yeah. And the other thing, too, because I know, you, you know, we, we talked about, like, um, being, you know, I guess high value or whatever in this mm-hmm. kind of sense. But it's funny because these guys want so many perfect characteristics. Yeah, just perfection. And, yeah, they want all this perfection, but their environment doesn't like produce perfection either they're like oh yeah i want like a classy girl like have all these things and she has to be well spoken or anything dude then why are you going to a dive bar like first of all why okay as a man why do you go to the dive bar i don't know i want to have fun i want to you know cut loose and all this kind of stuff okay cool so haven't you ever thought maybe the girl that's there equally just wants to cut loose. She's not going to be all dainty mannerisms and all this kind of stuff. So it's like, you're going to the wrong environment. What you're looking for. Yeah. I don't know. I always, I always feel like men expect to like get like the hottest thing in the world where women, it's Hollywood. Okay. You know, I'll (laughs) I'll put, that's our little redeeming thing is in Hollywood. Sometimes we see the goofball, get the gal. And you know what? I'm just, I'm going to cut you off. Go for it. Usually, the goofball wrote the movie. I'm thinking of Adam Sandler. Right. Oh, my gosh. Where yeah, he such an Anna Sandler movie. Where he always makes himself date the hottest Always the smoking babes. It's always, not yeah. Not realistic. And like, he doesn't do anything that's, like, super redeeming either. He just yeah. continues to be a goofball throughout the whole movie. And it's like, oh, man, she just falls for it. I'm like... like and I love Fifty First First Dates. I love so many Adam Sandler movies. That is a classic, yeah. I remember... Which one was it with... Uh, I'm, I'm going to kill... Oh, I can't think of it. Jennifer Aniston, Adam Sandler. He's like a plastic surgeon. They always surgeon. play together. <laughs> well, he's like a plastic yeah. surgeon, and she's the assistant that he like isn't mm. into because she's a mom. Okay. And they go to Hawaii. See, I'm not you know a huge movie? Adam Sandler movie follower. Oh, yeah, I love but those but Roy is, but she's not here. <laughs> but yeah. Um, but 
in the movie, he has, like, these two, like, super hot women interested in him. And I yeah. remember that was, like, the first time that I was, like... And they, like, fall into his lap. It's, it's a very similar trope. I yeah. mean, even, like, a lot of other different movies that I've seen. Like, yeah, like, the hot girls just fall into someone's lap. And, like, as a guy, sometimes we we fall into that trap. We're like, oh, yeah, like, I'm, like, an emperor or something. <laughs> like, dude, no, like, you're, you're I, not, dude. You you I work at, like, totally McDonald's. Date her. Yeah. Like, no, you can't. I think it's the same thing, like, um... I don't remember the numbers exactly, but it was a shocking statistic where they okay. were asking men, like, do you think you could beat Serena Williams in a tennis match? Yeah. And so many men said yes. Right. And it's like, yeah, I don't I don't think that they properly assess themselves. You know, and I think that comes with, it, in one hand, it's, it's a, oh gosh. You, I love the confidence, okay. but I hate the cockiness. Right, exactly. Yeah, so confidence is a great thing, guys. And if you believe in yourself, you should. Because, I, you know, as, as a man, and I, I look at the way media starts to treat men or has been treating, and I see it with different eyes, like not as like mm-hmm. a, a victim type of eyes, but just purely as looking at the media itself. Like, yeah, there's a lot of things that try to trot down on male confidence. So I'm glad that some of y'all feel super confident, but there's confidence and there's ignorance. Like, yeah. don't be don't be a cocky, ignorant guy, you know. Um, the difference is, though, I feel like confident men don't yeah. have to say what they are. Right. And they tend to, like, back up who they are right you know like there's a lot of power behind confidence whereas cockiness is a little more fake yeah you know confidence doesn't necessarily have to explain itself either it's like like hello i have this i have that but i don't need to boast it to the world but like some guy that's cocky is like outwardly trying to say every single accolade that he's ever got because he's nervous he's like (gasps) bragging like about anything and everything yeah. like have you ever oh gosh because i just went to one not too long ago i went to um a party where it was a bunch of like filmmakers and actors okay and i was excited to be there i think i saw the invite for that but i didn't go yeah there was there i was excited to be there there was a lot of really successful people there but i was bored out of my mind because everyone that talked to me just yeah. ego fueled oh gosh like everything they've ever done in their lives yeah and i'm like and every celebrity they've ever worked with are new. And they just they just looked at me blankly and they're just like, I worked with da 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 I've done da 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 I was Sounds on da 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 movie. And I'm like, yeah. okay, um, congratulations. And I just right. said congratulations like a hundred times. Yeah. And no one asked me a single question. Like they would ask me like, would you ever audition? And I was like, yeah. And then they would just, yeah, because I wrote the movie. And I'm, I'm like, like Okay. Ooh, wow. Wow. Amazing. You're you're incredible. It kind of reminds me <laughs> of uh, the guys that have the super loud cars. Oh, like, yeah. Just Honda and Nisa just, <laughs> dude, you guys are ruining our names as guys, please. Like, I promise, we're not all like this. We're not all obsessed with being noisy and loud and, like, you know, just, can you just for once just hold that in a little bit? Like, I know you're trying to compensate for something, but, like, mm, take another hobby. I don't, I don't always, know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't always mind. Yeah, you don't always mind it? I feel like, I don't know, it's kind of flattering and cute occasionally. Yeah. As long as they're not in your face or, like, being too aggressive. I feel like compliments are always going to be compliments. So, like, yeah. just because it happened, like, two days ago, a guy was on a motorcycle at a red light, like, yeah. staring at me through the window, and I'm like, oh, my God, I'm going to pretend like I'm not <laughs> noticing you. But then he, like, like made it go loud and, like, did a little wheelie. I was like, yeah. that was kind of cool. Okay, Yeah. All right. <laughs> but, like, that was the end because of it. That's the thing. But he didn't he's follow trying, me. He but didn't... he's trying to appeal to you. He's not yeah. trying to, like, just terrorize the whole yeah, neighborhood, you know, because it it's quick like, little thing. yeah, a quick little something. Like, okay, yeah, you wanted to shoot a shot. All right, here's what I got. You like it? You don't? Cool. Yeah. And, you know, he didn't follow me, which yeah. is a good sign. Yeah, that, that tactic doesn't freaky. work, guys. Yeah, it's I don't know. It's happened too many times, and it just, I carry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know how you think this is going to end, but. Yeah. And not Christmas presents, by the way. <laughs> what? Yeah, you said you carry. I'm like, oh, you're not carrying Christmas presents. No, not Christmas presents. Locked and loaded. Okay, so I want to end this with a little bit of. I would say hope, but no, let's just go down a completely different road. Yeah, give us All like right. a horror story. Give us like one of, if not like the worst date you've been on. So we just got to know. I'm trying to think. I don't want to do anything too depressing. Okay. Um, so I've gone out with like murderers uh, or guys that seem like murderers. Um, 
You know what? I think the worst one will forever be the guy that took me to such a beautiful restaurant. Okay. And but he didn't talk all night. So I was just speaking Ooh. to myself and he would give me like one word answers. I'm like, what do you do? Do you like your job? How long yeah. have you been there? One word, I'm like one word, one word. And eventually I just found myself kind of talking to myself while he stared at me. Yeah. And I felt bad because the restaurant was really expensive. So I just yeah. kept talking and I was like, yeah, like I'm, I'm kind of addicted to chocolate. I'm trying to lose weight. So I should probably stop. And like, it was just one of those one off comments that I mentioned. And he was like, you know, hey, do you want to go ahead and order dessert? I said, yeah, um, do you want to split this like lava cake with me? And he's like, sure, that sounds great. Um, and it was a San Francisco restaurant, really expensive, okay. really nice, like white glove table. Cool. Like it was so gorgeous, probably some of the most expensive food I've ever eaten. And they come back with the lava cake and they put it down on the table and he grabs like, I don't, I I think it was like a steak sauce or it was something that was like ketchup like but not ketchup okay. and he squirted it all over and smashed the Yo, lava cake the immediately <laughs> and the waitress is still standing there and she's just shocked and he goes you can take this now like mad what and i, I was just i was holding my fork and i was like why why did you do that gordon ramsay where are you <laughs> like save us like come and on call he, him a donut or something yeah and he looks at me and it was like the first sentence he really said all night and he was yeah. like i just wanted to show you that i would support in stopping you eating chocolate i would support you in that what? i would support your goals and i'm like sir this guy sounds like a killer lot, like if, he sounds dangerous if it was it freaked me out i couldn't talk to him again yeah and each one of the members of like the back staff like the cooks and chefs whoever works in the back they definitely like came out to peek at us right after they saw what we did They're like is there the a camera cake. behind here is this like a well prank? they were just like what kind of monster <laughs> like, right peeking out because it was if that was a chef i'd be upset they seemed upset they just looked confused yeah and like I was just so confused. And then I realized when I read our texts back between right. that guy, because I was like, is there a sign here that he's crazy? Right. Um, and I was reading our conversations back later that night. I realized that I had definitely romanticized him mm. in my head because right. a lot of our texts, I was kind of talking to myself. Right. But I just wanted him to be this great guy. I guess that silence sometimes, you know, it allows yeah. the imagination to grow, which is sometimes a good thing. Like, guys, like, if you feel that you over-talk, yeah, embrace a little bit of silence. Yeah. But um, not if you're, like, some psychotic I like guy. I usually, I like to ask questions. That yeah. way, like, give them an opportunity to explain themselves and, like, get to know that person. That's why you're on a date. You want to get right. to know that person. So I love asking a lot of questions. And, you know, a little banter. Right. But he literally barely spoke. And then the one time he did, it was horrible. He ruined a lava cake. Oh, my gosh. I think about that lava cake a lot. What kind of demon does actually. that? <laughs> okay, so with that being said, um, I know you guys are so excited to hear even more juicier stories. So stay tuned. We want to have Kaylee on as a guest again. And so, okay, we're going to recap real quick. So red flags to watch out for. Number yeah. one was... The bad hygiene slash lack of effort. I'm going to okay. put those two together. Um, the second one, I think it was like being the victim or like everyone around Right, victim blaming, crazy. everyone else is a problem, yeah. Yeah, every girl I've ever dated is crazy. And it's like, oh, you're... I don't know about that. Like yeah. you might make me crazy. Right. Um, and then third was confidence. Yeah, the confidence versus cocky. Right. Like you have to kind of sort it out. Is this man confident or is he cocky? So guys, with that being said, take a minute before you leave here, I want you to comment down, what are some things that you will work on so that you can have a better date next time? And also, if you have some horrible dating experiences, please, we want to hear all the juicy details, leave them in the comments, and we'll see you again next yeah. time. Or any red flags that you want to add, just go ahead and comment. Yes. Alrighty. Peace.